Good day guys and welcome back, it's me Nate. I'm here today with a DCS video. And today we've gone back a little bit to something more, uh, somewhat more basic. We're back in the FC3, the Flaming Cliffs 3 modules. We're in the F15C today. Um, I've been watching some other uh, DCS video uploaders and all the time in the comments I see, you know, more F15C, can we get more F15s? And I've been playing the F15 myself uh, recently with a friend of mine who uh, doesn't like the interactive cockpits some of the other advanced modules give. And I can I can kind of see why. You know, if you haven't got the time and you haven't learned how to use the interactive cockpit, or if you haven't got a good head track set up, this is still actually one of the best ways. It probably stayed the still best way to play a jet simulator game without much hassle. Only takes you know 10, 15 minutes to learn some of the key setups, and it's pretty straightforward. And, and the F-15, of course, is a fantastic plane. It looks great, handles fantastic, really competitive plane on the on the online dogfighting. Uh, circle, if there is such a circle. I mean, I know there are some competitive groups out there who do play. Um, unfortunately, so for me, it sadly is not inter interactive. There is an FXX in traffic cockpit, uh, F15E, I've been considering getting, so I might do that. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Today, we're here to talk about the F15C's ILS landing system. Now, I don't, I mean, it's not an interactive landing system like you would in the other planes. You, you, you can't select the airfield uh, nav aids and you don't have to tweak with the volume. Um, but it, it, it's very functional and it's actually surprisingly um, easy and accurate to use. Um, so the two instruments we're looking at today will be the artificial horizon, which is the black white ball with the yellow crossbars, and the thing below that, which is the horizontal situational indicator. I will struggle with that one, the HSI. Now the artificial horizon has a uh, the two the two bars um, work to show you the glide the glide slope and the localizer, which puts you on track with the uh, with the runway's um, approach profile. But that will be more obvious later. The HSI gives you a line from wherever you, uh, you've chosen to go to, and it gives you a line to follow. Uh, so you, if in this case the ILS is um, Actually, go back a step. The ILS, when you choose an ILS and a DCS on the F-15C, it points you initially to an initial approach fix. It doesn't actually take you straight to the airfield like the MiG-21's RSBN does. You, it puts you a, a, a little bit further out. So if you look here on the ILS, it says 10.8. And if I put 10.8 off to the nose, I zoom out here, 10.8 off my nose puts me about there. And actually, you can see it puts me uh, in a, a, a position to land at Katusi. So that's what it does. So I will be flying out there. So I'll be on pause, and um, it, it'll become more obvious. So you can see the course bars move. So the course bar is telling me to go to um, fi fix, and you can also use the um, the little vertical slash that tells you where to go on the HUD. Um, I prefer looking down personally, but that's just my um, habit. And I'm probably a little bit too high, so I'm going to push my power back a little bit and push it into a gentle descent. Um, so now you can see we're slightly right of track. So. The bar moves left and right depending on relative, your, your position relative to the track. So let's list gently to the left here, bring the course bar in. Yeah. While we're setting up for the initial approach fix, now I, I, you shouldn't be too fast. You shouldn't come blitzing in at 400, 500 knots because once you get the approach fix, you turn right, you're set up for the ILS. And the last thing you want to be doing is filling with the speed, getting the speed brakes, trying to reduce your speed. On a, set, on a sensitive bit of the, the approach. So let's leave that there for now. Um, once you get to the initial approach fix, the course bar, not course bar, sorry, the um, artificial horizon should come alive, you should get a glide slope and you should get a uh, localizer. Um, and that will put the crosses up and down, left or right. Now the, the game is to try and get the two yellow bars to um, intersect in a, as a cross in the middle of the artificial horizon. Um, and that will set you up, and you just follow that profile all the way down. 300 knots, I'm doing okay here, speed's not too fast. Once we get over the fix, which is in 2.5 nautical miles, um, it, it will swerve violently to the, the, the course bar will swerve violently to the one side. That's because once you're over the fix, you need, then need to turn to the direction where the runway is, which is over there, and you can see it's a pretty violent turn, it's a 90 degree turn, so that's why it's doing that not to back. So there, it's, tur it's turned already, and you can see it's coming in. Speed breaks down, and we want to be chasing that bar. Now, to do this properly, there is a folder in your DCS installation which gives you the altitude you need to be in and the direction to come in. Um, I've been really lazy and I've forgotten that, but I should be. What I should be doing is looking at the altitudes uh, on the um, on the airfield and coming in uh, the appropriate altitude. I've just arbitrarily chosen like four thousand five hundred. Um, 
this might be a little bit tricky. So right now it tells me the yellow bar is quite high, so we're above the um, the glide slope. So, but we are on the localizer, so we are dead aligned with the runway. And if you look up, yes, there it is. I'm obviously in a on a rainy day, you might not be able to get that. So um, we're just going to try and pretend it's a really bad day, and I'm going to look inside the cockpit. I'm going to look left at my speed, and then look at the artificial horizon. We want to be approaching about 250 knots. So I put the speed brake up. You can hear the speed brakes. Uh, yeah, we want to be pushing about 250 knots, 200 knots. Um, uh, there's the glow. There's the the um, put the speed brakes down. There's the uh, glide slope. Now, the closer you get, the more sensitive this has become, which is why you didn't want to be fiddling around with your speed, because if you're fiddling around with speed, you'll be looking at the speed, and then you will lose lose track of the uh, the localizer or the glide slope. You can see here. It's taking me a lot of focus, but so far so good. So 200 knots, I'll put my flaps down. A thousand foot, I'll probably put my gears down soon, but I don't want to put my gears down just yet because I'm in a good position. I don't want to be fiddling around with my aerodynamics of my plane just yet. Let me check my speed brakes, put them down. Brakes down, speed's a little bit low, but the flaps are down, so that's probably okay. So far so good. We don't want to be anything lower than 180, so I'm push my speed further forward a little bit. So there we are. 400 foot. Now, in a real ILS, at this stage, you want to be looking up and seeing if you're on track, in which we are. So I put my gears down here. I've got the power entirely. And probably coming a little bit too fast. I didn't quite plan this correctly. Keep the nose up a little bit. Keep, keep the flaps down. Let go of the brakes a little bit. So let's put the nose down now. Now I probably could have come in a bit slower there, and uh, would have been okay. Um, but I did. I didn't really. I lost track of my speed. So you can see, I just made it to the end of the runway. And I was holding the brakes the whole way down, which is not what you want to be doing. You want to be holding the brakes down only a little bit so you don't burst your tires. Um, in the MiG-15, sorry, the MiG-21, I think in the MiG-15 as well, if you hold the brakes down like that, your tires will explode and your aircraft will off the side of the runway somewhere. So, um, yeah. So that's actually it. It's not, it's not difficult. It's, you probably need to learn, uh, the hardest part is probably setting up um, the, the actual ILS. So you can see here, if I flick it up to nav mode and ILS mode, cycling it, it doesn't actually tell you which ILS beacon you've got it just you it only gives you the distance so you're gonna have to judge like by the using the map and working out like oh you know 15 nautical miles yeah it's probably out there so that's the only way to do it but otherwise the ILS system is relatively simple it just takes practice uh, what you need is really is a speed control and and uh, a little bit of focus because it's it's not hard um, obviously it gets difficult with weather and at one point I might do one with weather and just to see how that looks. But that's it, yeah. So, you know, um, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, that's until next time. It's Nate out.